Um, Mr. Ryan Campbell, the floor is yours. Oh, per perfect, thank you, Kelly. Yeah, I guess I'll spearhead it here uh, before lunch. So, uh, good morning, Grizzlies. My name is Ryan Campbell. So who am I? I am a purebred Calgarian that loves the outdoors, a petroleum and reservoir engineer with a passion for data, and recently, a new dad. So I'm targeting a pivot into data science and, and analytics roles in Calgary's growing tech sector. So my whole life, I have been known as a puzzle master. So why is this? Well, I'm the one who sees the big picture. I love putting all the pieces together. And then I find that missing piece that enables teams to deliver value. I am thorough and pragmatic in my approach and a true collaborator at heart, believing that the best solutions come through collaboration. The key pieces that I bring to the table are 13 years of engineering experience, progressing to handling assets over 1 billion in value, expertise in business development, evaluations, and economics, and a growing skill set in data science and analytics, which I have been able to utilize in my work for over the last five years to automate workflows and increase efficiencies by over 50%. So everyone needs a great puzzle master on their team. Although, I do have one puzzle I have yet to master, and that is newborn sleep. If you do happen to have any solutions for this, uh, my wife and I would be all ears. So, my ask of you Grizzlies for today is uh, for any feedback and connections that you may have as I make this pivot. I would like to thank you for your time, and we'll take any of your questions. All right, so you're pivoting to focus in the data science area. Uh -huh. Can you tell us a bit more about that before I hand it over? What would your ideal role look like? What would you be doing? Well, my ideal role uh, more in the data science side in the tech sector, I would say that the title would be data scientist. And so I'm looking at Calgary's growing tech sector just because um, there is such challenge, challenging times in uh, oil and gas. And actually, I'm targeting this actually too because I don't view it as like a full pivot. It for given my experience that I've already applied a lot of this uh, in my role previously in oil and gas. I'm doing this more as a progression or a soft pivot uh, in my career. Mm -hmm. the, the, I guess the one challenge I do have though is that I just haven't had like the uh, previous job title of data scientist. I've been had more of the engineering titles uh, with my progressive experience kind of moving up through the ranks um, at my prior company, CNOC, uh, formerly Nexon. Okay, and, and can you tell us what, what critical problem do you solve for a company as a data scientist? I mean, there's more than one, obviously, but just... Yeah, well, I think that, I mean, give, given a lot of my experience has been uh, over the last few years from that company, is, is automating and like streamlining workflows. So I, I think the biggest saving that I bring for companies is uh, the automation piece. So basically... I've seen firsthand uh, how much values can give like automation uh, and kind of, and then also coupling in data science and analytics workflows to this, that's the gift that keeps on giving. And it's not just, and it's not just the gift that keeps on giving like um, for the business, but then also if you're bringing in new people to a team, like this is what really the collaborator part of it in my heart is, is then I've seen other people come into our new team and we're able to get them up to speed incredibly fast because we have like databases and automated workflows and dashboards already built to do, to do a lot of the analysis. So it's not reinventing the wheel. And then it's easily um, able to be found where you can, you know, quantify the dollar values uh, for a lot of these, a lot of these savings. All right. Thank you very much, Ryan. I will hand it over to the Grizzlies. So with your interest and in, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that somebody actually has data science and, and uh, you know the use of that at the top of their resume because it's it's where the world's headed. Did you per chance uh, apply to the OSIF um, opportunity that's coming up in downtown Calgary to uh, be part of the Spartan Controls Alta ML uh, Suncor uh, Center of Excellence? No, uh, I didn't. I didn't apply for that one offhand there, Terry. Actually, I just uh, recently had heard about it. But uh, actually, you were, you, were, you were one of the guys I was, yeah, certainly interested to talk to with you also uh, being on the board of Alta ML here is, um, I was using basic, 
basically I've kind of decided to do this uh, progressive pivot um, just fairly recently coming through the higher landing program. And so I had been previously applying for some uh, more oil and gas type roles um, and was going through the higher landing program here because basically Jackie kind of gave me a good kick in the butt too is like you really need to do that self-discovery process and figure out what your true value is to know like to know if you if you want to do this. Um, so, that, so that particular that particular uh, opportunity um, I, I guess it just came to my radar a little bit too late. Well, it's, uh, well, it'll come up again. I think the first intake is full because they had over 500 applications. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah. that, just, that shows you that the demand is there and that uh, people are interested. So um, I can introduce you to the guy that heads up Delta ML's Calgary operation. Um, well, I, yeah, that'd be wonderful. And I think I with, with, with your experience, uh, I think you know, being the translator between oil and gas operations and the propeller heads, you don't need to be a data scientist. And the fact you've got both is pretty powerful. Um, I don't see Python in your resume, um, and you don't have to be a ML programmer, but it would be useful perhaps as your next step if you're thinking more technical stuff to, to push that through. So, yeah, I, yeah, I was gonna say, you kind of hit the nail on the head there, Terry, was that I'm pursu uh, I am proficient in R programming, and then I'm pers still pursuing uh, further education currently here with online courses and looking into uh, some more formal training later this year in the new year. So what does that next ideal employer look like? You know, what's your passion about making oil and gas operations more efficient? Who is it that you want to work for and, and what's the what's the day to day job existence for you? Sure. Well, I mean, I think uh, my, my ideal employer is, is certainly definitely more working in that data science and analytics uh, roles. And the reason we're targeting the tech, the tech sector is just um, I'm getting I'm getting getting a little dis you know just disillusioned with oil and gas being in such challenging times uh, in Calgary. So uh, one ideal employer where I actually have two contacts that work there as well is uh, Atabiotics. Okay. So they're not they're actually not yeah they're actually not actively hiring too many people right now um, currently just with challenging times but. Basically, the interesting thing about them and other tech companies that I'm trying to target as well is what you kind of tied it together is it's those tech companies that have an appreciation for more of that operations and engineering side uh, background that I am able to bring along with then the fact that I've also been able to apply, um, you know, a lot of these analytic techniques in my work over the last five years. So kind of know, know the challenges and hurdles and business realities of uh, doing all that. And so like one of those contacts is actually an interesting story is uh, he used to be a pipeline QAQC guy, actually. Uh, and now he's actually doing software QAQC over at Abiotics and it seems to have been quite seamless for him. So that's kind of how I see it as, you know, maybe not as a hard pivot, but even as like a progression here. Yeah. Well, you don't feel bad about not having data scientists in your title because that title didn't exist five years ago. So yeah, you know, that's, it's, uh, it's, it's been a, quite an acceleration. The yeah, other that's a good point as well. The other entity you might want to consider is uh, a company called Ruth's AI in Houston. Ruth's AI. So they've mapped out all the fields in the Permian and the individual web websites or well sites and figured out exactly what's going on uh, in that whole production area. And with your background, I think that could be a powerful combination. Okay. Yeah, no, thanks for uh, that, Terry. I, I had heard of them and kind of along those lines as well like even another company that i had been researching was uh, Vintry Technologies they're like a company that automates bringing together all the like EPC and construction documentation and everything and streamlining that process so like that's also another company more with some of my background as well that's applicable that uh, could be a target employer and reality is you don't have to be in Houston anymore yeah oh yeah for sure because then a bunch of the uh, a lot of these tech companies I'm actually attending the the Live Tech Love Life Career Fair tomorrow there uh, to meet with quite a few of these guys because um, the one the one piece of information I'm still looking to get is it's more there's a lot of that analytics companies out there but then chatting with them and knowing who they're working with I can then be more strategic and targeted uh, in my soft pivot and job search uh, in the tech sector there. So. Perfect thanks. So Ryan, data scientist could be like the hottest job uh, opportunity in the market today. Um, and, you know, there are literally hundreds of those jobs available in, in Calgary alone, I would say. 
Um, so first of all, you need to find out who all those companies are. And I think you, if you're not attending the job fair that's going on with Alta ML and Simend and Atabotics and Athenian and all of the companies, that would be a good thing for you to do. And I'll make sure you get that link. Oh, yeah, actually, that was the one, that was the live live tech love yeah. life one. I, yeah, I'm, I'm I signed up for that one there. Right so. on, good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think that I think that with the right mindset and the right um, uh, understanding that, that that this is a different type of role and a different culture that you'll be entering into, that would be the one thing that I'd want to get yourself prepared for. There is that um, it's. Uh, a little different than working for for Nexon for sure um, but but lots of um, energy and um, innovation and creativity that um, that I'm sure that you would enjoy within those firms so to to stand up and say I'm ready to make this change I think you'll have lots of opportunity just like you said research the companies that you're um, approaching so that you have um, you know something to say I can add value here but um, but there's a lot of need in the in the market right now for for people with your talents. Okay. Well, that's great. Yeah, that's great to hear, Sandy. Because uh, I've been you know with your kind of fine tech background and um, you know financing a lot of the new technology companies here too. That um, you know I see a lot of growth potential and everything. Whereas uh, it's just certainly more challenged in the oil oil and gas realm. Uh, even going through the higher lining program over you know kind of the last three months or then like say two oil and job postings, but I think um, you, you, have, you bring up a good point there too. It's, it's just that change of the change of mindset. And that's why I took the time with the program that um, it is growing so fast as well. Uh, you know, I could be sending out hundreds of resumes a day, but you know, I need to be strategic and targeted uh, given also the fact that I do need to get my foot in the door and, you know, and get some connect, get some connections in this area. It's thankful. Like most obvious one is antibiotics just because I had a few friends uh, that did do a pivot over there. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, I, I think that understanding the more you can understand about the opportunities that are in the space is great. So networking, talking to your buddies that have made a change and uh, following some of these companies on LinkedIn, like just start following them all and you'll see what they're talking about. You'll see what they're trying to solve. Um, you know, what their solutions are bringing to market. And there's some, as I said earlier, that are going to be straddling oil and gas and not oil and gas. So, I mean, the, the opportunity is broad, but um, start to start to follow what's happening in the space. And I think that, um, that you will find something. Yeah, no, totally agree. Like that was, it was a few weeks ago. It was when I was referencing, yeah, Jackie just finally gave me that good kick in the butt. And I'm kind of at right that, right, right at that perfect cusp in terms of, I still have enough of my career ahead of me that, you know, kind of that the world's my oyster in that sense, right? So it's really, I just need to be, be focused, get my foot in the door and, you know, get be into the- Be prepared for a culture change. Be oh yeah, yeah, for oh, yeah, for sure. Which uh, I'm, I've kind of already starting to get ex get to get exposed to. And it's yeah. that, that actually ties in a little bit to my aha moment a little later here actually with kind of culture mindset changes anyway. Yeah. So just to follow up on the, on the culture issue, cause I think it's really important. Um, all your experience has been in one oil and gas company, right? Big, big oil and gas company. And uh, um, until recently, um, and I think it's still the case, but until recently there, there was a real reluctance on the part of uh, tech companies to hire oil and gas talent. Um, so what would you say to, to a tech company that might kind of not be quite sure whether you're gonna fit culturally in, in their organization? Uh, well, I think, I mean, actually that I, I would tell them that uh, even in the past, I've had uh, some experience with culture transitions and maybe that's what you're referencing to my resume there uh, a little bit was actually, um, you know, I was, I, I, I was actually one of the ones even at Nexon probably but like they just recently did significant downsizing as well, but one of, you know, lived through the whole uh, CNOC takeover uh, of Nexon and uh, kind of that whole cultural transition. So it's, you know, moving from a Canadian entity over to, uh, you know, a, a very kind of, you know, big language change, big cultural change, yeah. more hierarchical and kind of level driven than uh, you would ever ex expect. And so uh, like that's basically where that collaborator part in my heart really came out of me. 
is um, they really like that, you know, I could do all this automation and data analytics stuff to kind of make things more efficient. But what they really did like about that as well was the collaborator piece was that I would always reach out and try to build uh, productive relationships with the, pe with the people I was working with. And then that, that helped facilitated um, just, just more, more buy-in and, and progress. Uh, so I think that I would approach a tech, I'll have a curse. I have a cursor related to that. I can tell you after, after here as well, but I would say that, you know, that's kind of the mindset I would bring to a, a tech company as well as I had been working here in oil and gas and have, have, and have gone through like, you know, kind of big company changes, transition changes of cultures. Um, and so th this kind of progressive pivot over to tech uh, is, is something likely similar. And a cursor around this was actually, uh, was shortly after we got taken over by uh, CNO at Lucy there. So I was actually, I was actually someone uh, on our team here where I found kind of that coined missing piece uh, that actually gave us uh, some funding approval to uh, progress like with a 30, $130 million uh, acquisition opportunity bid that we were working on. And so this was all happening, you know, as this cultural tradition was uh, changing with Nexon. And so basically what was happening with this originally was the approval was stuck uh, with the managers in approvals in Beijing. Like we had met all the corporate hurdles, pitched to decision makers, but just weren't getting any progress. And it wasn't until that, and part of this transition, it wasn't until that I had actually kind of took a step back and found that they were recycling our work back down to their technical teams because they weren't totally proficient in it. That then I was, you know, identified that we needed to reach out and build productive relationships with their technical teams. And once we started doing that, then things started to progress. And then we, you know, we were getting the approvals and that sort of thing. So that's what I would emphasize. This is that collaborator part of it. That's uh, one of my North stars there. Okay. And so more, more narrowly then, um, why is an oil and gas guy like you with so much experience in data science, um, a great fit for a tech company? Well, I would say I, I would be a great fit for a tech company because uh, I have a lot, like I've kind of have a lot of that real life experience uh, dealing with good and poor data. So, you know, I've, I've been through kind of, you know, ne needing to know the ask questions, you know, you, you still need to go through your business propositions um, and, you know, and, end of day show how you're going to deliver value that more points, you know, to the, that pragmatic big picture part uh, of my North, of my, of my North star there. So. I mean, uh, I think that's where, um, you know, I, I think that that would come into play anyway. Okay. And it's to keep the focus on, keep that focus on the value. Okay. That's great. Thanks, Ryan. You're welcome. Hey, Ryan. Um, so I think it was in um, probably uh, 10 years ago, Forbes said that uh, data analysts was going to be the sexiest uh, career in the 21st century. Um, and Terry alluded to it that um, the, there is 500 applicants for this opportunity in Calgary. So my question is twofold. One is, it's like what happened when petroleum became really important in the 90s in Calgary. Everybody was getting a geology education and engineering. So there's probably going to be a stampede to being data scientists. So first question. How do you stand out in the field now? And then the second part of the question is there was a study done in the States by Birch that said the medium years of experience for a data scientist is 9.3 years and for predictive and analytics is nine years. And I think you said at the beginning you had about five years experience. Yeah. So my question is how do you differentiate yourself um, and if things are going to more automation, how do you stand out in a crowd? And are you a leader or are you a follower? I'd love to hear your impression on that. Okay. No, thanks, Caroline. Greatly appreciate it. So uh, I'll just, just to address your first question there, I think what makes me feel, you know, would make me stand out from the five other applicants that uh, Terry alluded to. So uh, I guess to reference back, I probably would say that that is with, given some of the demonstrated results that I have gotten, uh, my prior employer over the last five years applying these techniques in my work and like being able to deal with the real life uh, data and business situations that we have. So like one example of this was that I was actually, uh, when I was brought in um, 
to kind of the US properties with CNOC there. They saw how I progressed at my career in increasing responsibilities and uh, they actually entrusted our, our asset team uh, to manage like the uh, billion dollar uh, flagship Eagle Fruit asset that we have. And this, and this came from that they knew that I'm able to bring, bring like kind of this aut automation and detailed skill set, but then also this big picture thinking uh, to deliver value. So the story from that was actually, I was able to come in uh, to our Eagle Fruit asset, for instance, uh, so 2,500 plus wells. And I was actually able to have the time that it took us uh, to complete like uh, business development evaluations. And so, so early on, what our team actually had been doing was more, it was just, you know, one off and ad hoc uh, type analysis. Like we, did, we lacked a foundational uh, understanding. And so what I was actually able to do with my skill sets there is I was basically able to streamline the whole evaluation, like loading the entire Eagle for 20,000 wells uh, into what I coined uh, evalu an evaluations database. And this was where it's, you know, so it's all the, evalu it's, it's the foundational evaluation and then all the other evaluations also all tied into one spot that everyone could access. And then uh, built, also then built out a number of analytics workflows and dashboards from that so we could uh, do rapid fire analysis and speed things up. But I, I think, I mean, the one big winning from this as well is also, that also then all this data cleanup and data, data connections and automating of workflows so that you then have an analysis that's always up to date. Because that saves so much time. You might spend months doing that, but I've been able to show like through that, that I'm able to tie together all this finance and engineering data. And then that, I mean, that like I alluded to before, like that's, that's then the gift that keeps on giving because then we're bringing new team members into the team. Uh, I mean, this is then the collaborator part of me. This is what I love in my heart the best is then actually then enabling the whole team uh, to get to better solutions and then collaborating and then bringing you feedback. You can get your own solutions better is uh, we're, you know, we were able to bring up new team members to speed on the entire Eagle Fruit because we just go, you know, here, here you go, here's a complete, you know, uh, an always up to date analysis uh, that we're able to pull from to be able to rapidly do, uh, you know, business development valuations. And I mean, just to put, put a quick value on that, I mean, typically you might have 10 people working one of these things for like six months. So, you know, you're talking hundreds of thousands to half a million in, in savings just with efficiencies on a lot of this. So I, I would say that's what I bring to the table with this. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. So Ryan, um, you know, the tech innovation space is wide, it's really big. <laughs> what, um, where could you see yourself playing in that? Is it just anywhere or do you have anywhere you'd like to focus? Uh, well, that's a good question, Kelly. I think I mentioned a few of these before, but I, I, I'd like to focus more uh, in the tech area. So it would be with companies that, um, you know, either potentially have some clients or are doing some work, uh, you know, related to the in, uh, energy industry or, in, or engineering uh, wise. Okay. Uh, but it's, it's basically to sum it up. It's the, again, it's those tech companies that have an, like an appreciation and that are looking for uh, that engineering background in combination uh, with more of the, you know, the data science as well. And so, yeah, uh, naturally Alta ML with us uh, having Terry here. Uh, and then another one as well, uh, they're in, uh, spun up about five years ago was uh, their Vin Vintry Technologies. I'm looking forward to meeting them at Big Career for tomorrow. Uh, they work with bringing together uh, and automating the data collection of like all the construction and engineering and procurement documents. Mm -hmm. And I've worked some of that in my past as well uh, as like a, a plant process engineer at the balls at gas plant. So I have, I have this multifaceted engineering background that I think I could then, you know, that, I'll, that I'm going to be using to more target these companies. Um, and some of it too is more who they're working with, which they don't tell you online necessarily, but then that's where, um, you know, that I'm looking for your kind of your guys's feedback and, and then the point about any connections that you may have it so that then I can, uh, reach out and kind of just, you know, just have the coffee and do the IP to, you know, kind of figure out, you know, what backgrounds are you looking for? Um, really, it's, it's, it's how, you know, it's how you can then, what, what type of background are you looking for that, because they're always looking for people to solve mis business problems and, and add value, right? Uh, but I think just, just hiring a purely data science person who, who's quite fresh, you, you, you know, you don't have, you don't have kind of that depth of experience, at least that you can call upon 
um, like you've if you've delivered solutions already. Right. Well, and you know, or, this or might be this like might that. be where you're going to need to really um, boil it down into a crystallized value statement because there is, as was pointed out, so many. Um, it's a it's a market that's highly um, competitive right now. A lot of glitzy, you know, people with the the new language just coming out of you know school that have been steeped in this for since they were in elementary school. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And so then, so then, how? What are you like? How are you standing out with that value that includes the depth? Um, the other thing I'm surprised Terry never asked, so I'm going to ask. Yeah, it. no, go ahead. Terry um is just you know where do you see this role of data analysis going in terms of ai and what's your specific skill set in the machine learning ai realm have you taken courses are you familiar with the landscape and how do you how are you putting that together and then when you're answered once you've answered that we'll go on to finish our, our panel okay sure um so i guess to address your question kelly so yeah so i've done a number of courses uh, online courses in uh, data science and analytics. So uh, I basically through the course of the last five years, I taught myself uh, how to how to program in the R programming language, and mm -hmm. then also um, learned analytics, visualize it, data and visual analytics software. The the one my company used was called uh, Spotfire, um, but it's applicable. Power Power BI is another equivalent to those as well. Um, and then also I've also took a number of courses on. Uh, building actually machine learning machine learning models. Th these are multivariate uh, type type models. If Terry's more familiar with that than uh, I think the others here anyway. And ba basically, then is I just saw the power of these, you know, being able to pull these in into uh, the oil and gas sector. And then, sorry, what was the other part of your question? So it was. Well, I just wanted to know like where you position yourself in the trend. Um, you, where do you? How do you see the the AI? machine learning realm evolving and your role next to it. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I think I see the biggest uh, realm of the evolution here is it's, it's not going to replace the human mind. So AI is just going it, to, it's very good at pattern recognition. And then also um, I, I say it's the automation piece along with that pattern recognition as well. So and that's where, you know, I have some work examples in that where uh, I've been, you know, I've been able to show that, um, you know, kind of by automating things, it's that gift that keeps on giving. And that would, you know, that's kind of would be a part of my value proposition with the puzzle master and having to know all the pieces to bring them together. But then let's do it in the most efficient way. Let's automate it, make it not reinvent the wheel uh, for, for the next person there. And so there's always going to be a need uh, for that. And, you know, I see... Um, you know, whether it's say antibiotics or one, one of the tech, tech companies I am working with clients, there's going to be less process driven roles and people needed. And then there's going to be more, um, well, actually, you know, obviously more kind of analysis uh, type, type roles needed to kind of maintain these automated systems. And like, basically, you're going to have to, and this goes back to even my engineering experience here is you're, you're not going to have to be spending 80% of your time necessarily cleaning up data and getting it all together. And then 20% of the time doing the analysis is, you know, it's, it's trying, we're trying, and the whole, I mean, that's the whole part of data and science is you're trying to shift that though, is then let's try to get these automations and systems in place. And even ones that will recognize patterns for you ahead of time, but then you still need that data scientist and, you know, analyst to, to do the human check, you know, of, of what some of these, um, you know, machine learning, machine learning algorithms find. So, and I okay. think the biggest part of this from my experience is really a lot of people treat them as black boxes. So actually where I bring a lot of value is actually kind of the practicality or applicability of these things is in our work uh, in oil and gas is sure I can build a black box uh, machine learning model to predict uh, oil well performance. But it's the nuances of, um, I don't know if Terry's too familiar or not, but kind of do it like diagnosing the model. Uh, there's one thing called partial dependence plots, but they're basically, you try, uh, it's trying to deconstruct the trends and average trends within the models to understand, like, kind of, is it behaving properly given what I know about the real world? And, in some, and that's where the human is needed, is there's busts that happen in that. And so, um, you know, I give an oral 
an example for oil and gas, but even say in credit checking or something like that as well. It's, it's, the, it's, the, same, it's the same type of story. Okay, thanks Ryan. Um, and can you tell us please what your aha has been coming through the program? Oh, sure. Uh, so my aha moment uh, would have been at the second branding clinic. Uh, so that was when, um, just through kind of Jackie giving her a second pitch there, I moved from, like, I really truly did move from like a more of an engineering and black and white engineering mindset that I had been stuck in and moved into evaluation and marketing value proposition mindset. So it's more, you know, I, I was able to, um, you know, just realize and unlock the value, you know, how much value I bring beyond just, you know, my hard te technical engineering background, you know, in terms of the soft skills, the transferable skills, and a lot, of and that a lot of that's, this is highly applicable and framed in the right way adds a lot of value. Okay, great. Thank you very much. All right. Well, thank you very much, Ryan, for your presentation this morning. And we're going to take a few minutes and we'll call you into the Grizzly layer when we're ready.